My question to you is, you said that you would sit, you have sat with Diane Steele in her courtroom, is that correct, or you worked for her? I worked for her. I was a, um, a her law clerk for the first year of her judgeship. Okay. Um, did you sit within the courtroom at that no. point? Okay. Uh, my question is, knowing what you know as far as how the system is run in family court system, is there anything you would do to change um, anything within that court system as far as um, how domestic violence situations are handled or not handled? You know, I, I think that I think that there's a, a number of things that can be done as far as um, um, identifying individuals um, when a, I think that the one family, one judge rule is a is a good thing, and I think that that needs to say. I, I don't think that that. Um, I think that there was a an effort underway to change that, but um, I think that that should remain. Um, I think that scheduling orders um, and identifying cases where. Um, Families with less property or um, families without children that could be managed more quickly and get through the court more quickly. Um, judges could identify those cases and move those along um, more rapidly. Um, I don't know. I think that judges can manage their, their calendars more swiftly by taking a look at cases as they come in. Um, and I think that that's probably something that I would like to take a look at. Or are you talking about simply all just domestic violence cases? Well, what, I, what I'm referring to is once you find out that a person has domestic violence history or um, charges against him or a TPO order in the past or anything that revolves around domestic violence and he wants custody of his child, what recommendations would you have to that particular family or person as a judge, as a sitting judge, what would your recommendations be to that particular person in order for him to gain custody, or would you buy on the question of not giving him custody? What is your stance on that, and what would you have in place for yourself as a judge when those cases come in front of you? Well, what would the, be your standard? The law, the law as it is right now, is that the presumption is that an, indivi an individual who has uh, who has domestic violence charges against him is presumed not to be in the child's best interest for the individual to have custody. So that would be the law that I would enforce. I, okay. I, ask, I ask that because I know of many cases that uh, men have had domestic violence situations in the past and they're still given custody. So that's why I ask that question because a lot of people do not follow that law and it's the law. Thank you. Oh, no, I would enforce the law as it's written in the state of Nevada. Okay. Thank you. And um, if I can go back to Judge, thank you. Um, I have the same question for you. And it's pretty much the same answer. The, the law itself is black and white, and, it's, and it doesn't boil down on a, on a particular charge. Uh, it's not if you're charged with domestic violence, it's whether or not you've committed an act of domestic violence. But if the determination is made that you have committed an act of domestic violence, then obviously the presumption is triggered, which means there's no longer that presumption that you have joint custody. So even if you're coming in and, and indicating remorse for that particular act, regardless of whether it was male or female, the law is, unless you overcome that presumption, you are not fit to have an award of joint